My name is Joe Glazer. This is Glazer Instruments, Nashville, Tennessee. We do repair. I started out building guitars. I started building these three pickup tellies with a string bender, and it kind of became the Nashville Telly, which Fender picked up and called the Nashville Telly, which was only fair because I had been blatantly copying Telecasters all that time. I might have been 13. I saw Steve Warner playing uh, this red guitar. I was like, that's not a Fender, what is that? Um, and it was a Glazer. So I thought, man, I'd love to have one of them, you know? And then of course, growing up, you know, around other musicians, you hear about, well, Joe Glazer, you know, his shop. Like I built Skaggs Purple Guitar, for instance. It became pretty well known. And I'd get order after order for these purple tellies, and I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do one-offs because I have a really short attention span. So I quit building, sent back my deposits, and just started doing only repair because you, you meet a different person and a different problem every 20 minutes, which I really enjoy. I'm basically a problem solver, not, I mean, I'm an okay guitar tech. Um, everybody who works here is probably better at something than, than I am, but, uh, but I'm a good problem solver, and that's what, that's what I do. And that's led to our approach on how to do repair and also our approach in de developing tools and parts. Over the years, we've made a string bender. Something that was small, very lightweight, and to the best of my ability, non-invasive. When Joe first thought of a new way of designing this, I had to get it out of his brain and onto this paper until we finally got it. My name's Nick. I do a lot of the fret work, electronics, I'm a manager of the shop. I try to fill in when Joe's not here and keep the place rolling. Communication's a huge thing here. You know, it's everybody has their expertise, especially with eight, nine guys at this point, <laughs> and, you know, trying to work on one guitar. A fairly typical kind of policy of one person taking a guitar and following it all the way through, which you see at a lot of repair shops, we don't. We have kind of an unusual, different approach in that sense. We have specialists. So someone who focuses on paint and restoration, somebody who's working on acoustic setups, electric setups, folks over at the plate machine, someone installing vendors, someone who just installs frets. You know, Joe set the bar high here. And anything that I do, even if I know, I'm like, this is perfect, this is perfect. I'll take it to Joe or Nick. Nick is, you know, he's the eagle eye. And if it's not perfect, they do not want it going out of the out the door, you know. We're in Berry Hill, which is Studio Central. So it is uh, really important for people to take these great sonic pickups, these great guitars, and be able to play them in the studio in tune and on stage. These people need stuff done so that they can make the world's best records. And so we try to support them in that project. It's also why we live on this street where the police station is about four bu buildings away. and. We made a steel room to lock all this stuff up because there's, there's, there's an immeasurable value, not only financially, because we get old guitars, but guitars that have done certain things that are irreplaceable. You know, there's, there's, there's non, not expensive guitars have made 96% of the great music that we've ever heard or that we'll still think about in a couple hundred years. Things come through here from some of my childhood heroes. You know, the bar is set pretty high. You got to work, man. You got to work your tail off at whatever you do musically here. Greeny, the Les Paul, being able to refret that was a huge, huge badge of honor for me. And, you know, they, they came in at seven on a Friday night and they needed it Saturday because it was when they were releasing the Greeny model. It was just awesome to be able to do that. You know, that's something nobody's done. The players here don't care what stuff looks like. They really don't. It doesn't mean that we cut corners. We're very particular about a lot of stuff, but polishing things, we're not doing jewelry work here. We're doing frets that play the best they can and nuts that work the best they can. And taking an extra five minutes and buffing a nut to, to a high gloss on an instrument that would never have had that is not one of the things that we do. There are shops that do that. That just doesn't happen to me. If you want that, you don't come here. Nobody comes in here and goes, hey, check out my guitar. There's nothing wrong with it, it's great. 
Sometimes people come back in days later and go, hey man, this thing's great. And they get down on the floor and they start crying and we have to go, you know, we have to call a priest or something. But mostly everything that comes in here has a problem and if they could have already solved it, they would have. It all comes down to a problem and a solution. And I came out of the Bay Area. I had a Silicon Valley gig before this. I was around a lot of really smart people. And I noticed that particularly the scientists weren't intimidated by anything. And the worse the problem, the harder and, and, and faster they buckled down and came up with a way of doing it. When I first heard about the plaque, for instance, I thought, well, whew, that's crazy. You know, they sent me this sort of 3D over-exaggeration of what a neck looked like. And I thought, I, I told the guys, I, whoever called me, I said, um, they said, well, do you want one? I said, no, not in a million years, but check back in the year one comma zero zero, you know. I just couldn't even see where that stuff was part of reality until I got to be in front of a machine, saw it scan and realized that what you saw in a scan was what you wanted to see in reality. In terms of the United States, we were the first professional shop that took on a plaque. It's imposing the exact fret dress that you design in what we call the virtual fret dress. You scan the guitar and, and you look at that scan, you go, here's what I'd like this to look like. And you, you design that in software. It's just a video game. And then you turn it loose and then it applies that. So as it's moving in any of its complicated shapes or distances or angles, it's self-correcting. It's like having magnavisors that I never could have had. It's the best fret file I ever had. And it's also the best memory that we ever had. A lot of the things that bring warmth and soul to instruments start out as a human process. Once they're there, if you want to do the same thing twice, sometimes it helps to use something that is technology-based so that you're not reinventing that wheel over and over again. Getting to get my creative side out in here and then learning how to use these tools to do that, that was the, the hardest part, but Joe was always supportive of it and really anything I wanted, as long as I used it and made use of it, then he would get it. And so that's a very cool thing to have available. So technology, it, it, it's, it's incredible if you're really trying to do a good job. I mean, I've been through the D'Addario factory. People pretend that making strings by hand is a good thing. And um, I always tell them, it's like, these things used to be made by hand. Would you wear a pair of glasses that somebody sat and tried to put your prescription in like that? Or would you like it to be done by a machine that is flawless. If you're trying to give the best work you possibly can to your customer, two things are important. One is that you do it, and two, that you know you did it. Like when we're making an acoustic bridge and we want the pins to be in a straight line, you can go over the drill press and you know, take a sharp thing, put a point in there, and you'll see these bridges that people made over the years where the, the pins wander around. We just do it on the milling machine. It, com it comes out perfect every time. That alone won't make you good, but if you have that tool, you'll just never go back to doing it by hand unless there's some reason. Pretty much the final, final product there. Joe, when we first met, had a vision of shop management software, a complete picture of the person, of the guitar, and of the work that you're predicting to do, and what's actually been done. And so you see the full trajectory of the instrument through the life cycle. And that's, that's shop flow, that's, the, that's that work and now we've made that available to the world. In our products, we think about what are people tired of? What would they do something else about if they could? I run Music City Bridge and Shopflow, and Joe and I started these companies uh, almost 10 years ago now, designing parts, prototyping, helping manufacturers do a better job making guitars. That's the kind of work we do. Music City Bridge is focused on taking innovations that come from the shop and making them generally available to anybody who wants to order stuff. So we make a lot of this stuff in-house, like this bridge here, which is a replacement for the wrap under for those 52 Gibsons. It was a really foolish design, so much so that um, Gibson stopped doing it after about six months, but it's an issue and they, it was an otherwise pretty good guitar. I mean, there's 50 things that we make here. Everything is open to us. We can do whatever we want. What, what should we do? A guitar can have character, uh, a guitar can be beat up and 
aged and bled on and sweat upon, all these things that give it character, but a string has to be nearly perfect. And the reason we only stock Diodario strings is because Diodario strings are perfect. We carry one brand of strings. The reason we carry Diodarios is because it's what our customers use. Everybody who comes in here with very, very few exceptions plays Diodario strings. And they didn't get there because they get given the strings for free. They didn't get there because um, of any reason except dependability and tone. I've had, if we counted them, probably seven bad Diderio strings in 30 years. This is real. No strings intonate better on the electric than exhales. I put on a lot of strings. No strings intonate better on acoustics than EJs, in, in my opinion. Uh, Diodario is, is part of our customer support and sales experience. When people come in here, they think that we get them for free or, or something like that, but we don't. We have no, no other reason except for dependability and the fact that we are going to get asked to put them on anyway.